Today we're going to look at hand tracing lists again. We're going to be traversing the list and we're going to be accessing the elements. We're going to use the index and the subscript operator to access individual elements and just practice to what's really going on with our lists. We're, when we hand trace, we're also going to be keeping track of our values as we go. And I've got, we're going to be using the same list all the time. And I've also written down underneath what the index is because we need to keep separate the value in the index, which is the position. So starting with total and it equals zero. And I've got my counter here for my loop, i. And it's going to start at zero because it's not indicated there. And we're going to go up to nine. So remember, it never reaches what's in the range. So we're going to go from zero to nine. And I'm going to access an element and add it to my total. So let's get started. I is going to start at zero. And then I'm going to access A at I. I is zero. So I'm going to go to the index zero and the element is one. So I'm going to take total and I'm going to add one to it. So A at I was one. So I'm going to have total plus one and I get one. Now I'm going to come up here and increment my I. So now I becomes one and I need to access the element at index one, and that's two. So I'm gonna take my total and add this number to it. So one plus two, and now I get three. I'm gonna come up here and increment my i again. Now i is two. Right here, I'm gonna access the element at index two, which is three. So I'm gonna take my total and I'm gonna add a i to it. So three plus three, and I get six. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to increment again. Now i becomes 2. I mean i becomes 3. I'm going to access the element at 3, which is 4. I'm going to take my total and add 4 to it. I'm going to keep repeating this process. Now i becomes 4. I'm going to access the element at 4, which is 5. I'm going to add it to the total and get 15. Now I'm going to increment i again to 5, access the element at index 5, which is 4, add it, and I get 19. I increment again, 6, access the element at 6, which is 3, add those together, and I get 22. I increment again, 7, I'm going to access the element at index 7, which is 2, add them together, and get 24. I increment again, 8, access the element at 8, and I get 1, Add them together and get 25. I'm going to increment one more time. I'm going to go 0 to 9. So at 9 I get 0. Add 0 to 25 and I get 25. So if I wanted to know what's the answer, what's the value of total after this loop, total will equal 25. We traverse the loop. I kept track of my index and I would access the value at that index and add it to my total. So basically I just got a total of all of them. It, would, it did the same thing as a sum. Well, let's try another one. I'm going to use the same list, but I'm going to kind of skip every other one. I'm going to start total at zero again. And I have my list up here. And I have my i, which is going to start at 0, and it's going to go up to 9. So remember, it never reaches this number, and I'm going to skip by 2s. And then I'm going to have my a to the i that I'm going to add to my total. So start at 0, and a to the i, which is a to the 0, is 1. I'm going to add 1 to my total and get 1. Now I'm going to increment my i, this time by 2. So I have i at 2. i at 2 is 3. I'm going to take 3, add it to my total, and get 4. Now I'm going to increment i by 2. It becomes 4. So I'm, so I'm skipping every other one. The value of 4 is 5. Add that to my total, and I get 9. Now I'm going to increment to 6. The value at 6 is 3. 3 and 9, I get 12. Now I increment to 8, the value at 8 is 1, 12 and 1, I get 13. Now if I add 2 to this, I get 10, but I'm not going to reach 10, so I'm going to stop right there, and here's my final. The value of total, when this is all finished, 
is 13. Let's try another one that's similar to this. I've got the same A list right here. I've got my indexes listed. I'm going to start my total at 0. I'm going to have my I, I'm going to start at 1. And I'm going to go up 2, but not including 10. I'm going to also skip by 2s. But this time, I is going to start at 1 instead of 0. And I've got my A to the I. So starting at 1, I'm going to access the element at this index, which is 1. So I'm going to start with 2. Add, the, add this to my total, and I get 2. Now I'm going to increment my I by 2, so it becomes 3. I'm going to access A at 3, which is 4. Add this to my total, and I get 6. I'm going to increment my I by 2, so now I have 5. I'm going to access the element at 5, and I get 4. 6 and 4 gives me 10. I'm going to increment my i again to 7. The element at 7 is 2. I'm going to add these two together and get 12. Now I'm going to go again to 9 because 9 is still less than 10. The element at 9 is 0. 12 plus 0 is still 12. So my total after the loop is 12. Now let's try one that um, is just a little bit different here. I'm going to start total at 0. My i is going to start at 6. And then I'm going to go up to 10. Okay? And I have my a i. So I'm going to start here by accessing the value at 6, which is 3. I'm going to add them together, and I'm going to get 3. And I'm going to increment by 1, so 6 goes to 7. The element at 7 is 2. 3 plus 2 gives me 5. Now I'm going to increment again to 8. The element at 8 is 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. Everything's good so far. I'm going to go up to 9. The value at 9 is 0. Add that together. Now I'm going to keep going because I'm going to go all the way up to 10. And what happens when I try to access the element at 10? There is no index 10. So this is going to give me an index out of range error. I'm not going to have a final value for total because my program will actually crash at this time. Index out of range error. So look, for, you have to be really careful with the values that you put there. You might be able to detect just from without even doing the whole hand tracing that you're going to get an out of range error and that would be your answer. Now all these examples so far had us accessing the elements. So I wasn't making any changes. I was just practicing using a loop to traverse my list and then accessing the element at whatever index it displayed. Now we're actually going to change. Now we're actually going to change some of my list. So it's not going to stay the same. I'm still going to traverse the list. I'm going to access elements, but I'm going to make changes to the list as I go. So in the end, I'm not looking for a total, but what is the actual value of, of my list, A, after I've traversed it and made some changes to the elements. So I'm going to keep track as I go, and I'm going to kind of build as I go. So I'm going to go ahead And write this because I'm going to be making some changes as I go. Let's keep track of i. i is going to start at 1. And it's going to go all the way up to 10. Actually, it's going to go all the way up to 9. Okay? So I'm going to start at 1. And I'm going to always start on the right-hand side because it's just telling me the value. And this is telling me where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to start at, at i minus 1. So I have 1 minus 1, which is 0. I start right here. And what's this value? The value is 1. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to put it at 1, a 1, which is right here. So I'm going to, this basically, this value gets deleted, not actually removed, but it's going to get changed to the value that was here. 
So I no longer have a 2, now I have a 1 at position 0, and I have a 1 at position 1. I took the value at 0, and I put it at, at position 1. So you want to kind of keep track of, where well, here's my index and my position, and here's my values. Now I'm going to increment i to 2. I'm going to start at 2 minus 1, which is 1. I'm going to take this value, I'm going to put it at 2. A2. A2 is right here, and it becomes 1. I'm going to increment i again. 3, I'm going to start here at 3 minus 1, which is 2. So what's the value at A2? It's 1. I'm going to take this value, I'm going to put it at A3, which is right here. It becomes 1. Now I'm going to increment again. 4 minus 1, I'm going to start at 3, take this value, and I'm going to put it at A4, which is right here. So this one becomes 1. Now I increment again. I'm going to start at 5 minus 1, which is 4, right here. Take this value, I'm going to put it at A5, which is right here. So whatever was there goes away, and now it becomes 1. You can kind of see a pattern what's going on here. Let's go ahead and finish and make sure that we do not get an out of range error. So now I'm going to be 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. I'm going to start with this value and I'm going to put it at 6, which is right here. I go to 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to put it at 7, which is right here. Now I go to 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. I take this value and I put it at 8. So even though there's one there, it goes away and it gets a new one. And then I go to 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Take this value and I put it at 9, which is right here. Now I'm not going to go any further. I just go 1 to 9. So I stop. And what does my A look like? just has a whole bunch of ones. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's the new value of my list. I traversed the list. I actually took a value from somewhere on the list and I reassigned it. I kept it there. Okay, so I didn't move it from there, but I also reassigned it to a new place. Let's try something like that. This one's going to go a little bit differently, so you're going to keep track of your range and where I'm pulling the value from and where I'm putting it to. I'm going to start all over, so I'm going to ignore this list. That was just the answer for problem one. I'm going to start back at the beginning. Whenever you have these problems, always start back at the beginning. So here's my list all over again. I'm going to keep track of my i, and that's going to tell me my position. I'm going to write them down really small here. So this is my index or position. And this is my value. So I'm going to start i at 0, and it's going to go to 4. Okay, so I never reach this, start at zero, go to four. So I is zero. This tells me I'm starting always on the right hand side. A is zero, the value is one. I'm gonna take this value and I'm gonna put it at zero plus five or five. So I'm gonna come over here to position five. This value goes away and instead I'm gonna put the value what was at zero was one. So I replaced the four with the number one. I changed it. Now I'm going to increment i to 1. I'm going to start here on this left on the right hand side and what's the value at 1? The value is 2. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to put it at 1 plus 5 or 6. I'm going to go to position 6 and I'm going to put the value 2. Now I increment i again to 2. I'm going to take what's at position 2, which is 3. I'm going to take this value and put it 
at 2 plus 5 or 7. So I'm going to come here to position 7. I'm going to replace this with the value 3. Now I increment. I go to, I go to 3. So what's at value at position 3 is the value 4. I take this value, I'm going to put it at 3 plus 5 or 8. I come over here to 8. I replace this with 4. I'm going to go one more time, so I'm going to go up to 4. So now i is 4. What's at position 4? And, and the value is 5. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to put it at 4 plus 5 or 9. I'm going to come over here to position 9 replace this with 5. So what does my list look like now? I did not change the first 5. I used the values but I did not change them. I changed the last. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now both of those are fairly straightforward. Let's try another one where the answer might not be quite so obvious. So I've got a list here, list B, with 2, 5, 10, 3, and 7. And underneath I've written the indexes so we can have easy access to it. And I've corrected my little typo here. We're going to start with I at 4. We're going to go down to 2. So remember we're not going to reach 1. So we're going to have 4, 3, and 2. This tells me what my position or where I'm indexing, I'm going to find the value and do something to it. So I always start on the right hand side. I'm going to go at B of I, which is 4. At position 4 I have 7. So I have 7. I'm going to add 1 to it to get 8. And what do I do with this 8? I'm going to put it at, at I minus 1. I is 4. So I'm going to go to 3. At position 3, I'm going to change whatever was there and I'm going to put 8. Now I decrement i. It's going to go to 3. We're going to start the process over again. So b at 3, which is 8, because I just changed it. I'm going to add 1 to it. 8 plus 1 is 9. And what am I going to do with this 9? I'm going to put it at 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I'm going to come to the 2. I'm going to remove, you know, basically replace what is there with 9. Then I'm going to decrement one more time to 2. Let's repeat the process. B of 2, so I'm going to go to position 2, and the value is 9. I'm going to take that 9, I'm going to add 1 to it, so I get 10. What do I do with this 10? I'm going to put it at i minus 1. i is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I'm going to come here to position 1. I'm going to change the value there with 10. Now my loop stops because I've reached the range. I change three numbers, so my new value of b is 2, 10, 9, 8, 7. You just have to move carefully, keep track of i, keep track of your values, What you, you do all the math on the right hand side, and then assign it to the position on the left hand side. Check with your position and where you change the value. We're going to be doing some more practice with this in class in small groups. You, should, you can do a little bit of practice on your own for homework if you'd like.